Okay, if you don't have a door prize ticket, well, too bad. <laughs> if, you, if you need one, follow Elaine out there. She has more. But we're not ready for that yet. Oh, pressure. I um, have a plate, Dana. Okay, we'll go ahead and let George tell us story. Mother was Aunt Mabel. <laughs> Ethel's Aunt Mabel. And for my oldest sister Sylvia and my sister Bonnie and for me, um, happy birthday, Ethel. If Mama were here, she would say, Good work <laughs> and keep it up. <laughs> yes, she did. Uh, Ethel says to tell you that Aunt Mabel was her mother's sister, her only sister. And uh, so uh, one year mother had a bus trip planned and she was going to go to the west coast eventually to see our oldest sister Sylvia. But she said, um, I'm going to stop down there at Ethel's but she doesn't know I'm coming. And I said, well, why would you plan it that way, Mama? She said, never mind, never mind. And I said, but you can call at the letter, know you're coming, you know. And she said, no, it's better this way. Then she'll really know that she needs me. <laughs> and then she said that more than once, that those girls need me. Those girls need me, so I've got my job to do. I'm going to Ethel's whether I'm invited or not. And she did, many times. But she got better about informing Ethel that she was coming. So uh, nothing funny for my part except that Ethel returned that favor to me. <laughs> I was in bad trouble four years ago or so with my husband's illness. And our mom was failing, too. And, uh, but at this particular time, my husband was uh, kind of iffy. And the, Ethel didn't miss a week calling me to find out how things were going and to buck me up and uh, just uh, be there for me. And uh, things got worse, and um, Ethel kept calling. And, of course, other family members did, too. But younger, much younger people, much more immediate people. I demanded that my sisters be there for me. But Ethel volunteered. And um, it got to be uh, further on. The date of the funeral came, the bad event. And my family was there for me. I needed them to be there. I expected them to be there. And they were there for me. But nothing, nothing prepared me for Ethel to be there. And Linda and Clyde brought her. <laughs> it was like having Mama there. And I don't think I've ever properly thanked her. And I couldn't let this go by without not letting you know how much that meant to me. Thank you, Georgia. Happy birthday, kiddo. Thank you. You know? When you find out your relatives are your best friends, boy, that's one of the best gifts that God gives us. I'm so glad you're my friend. I've lived with my mother for 66, well, not with her for 66 years, but I had some very exciting years living with her, as my sister can testify. And we were talking about what kind of stories to share with you. Let's see. Should we share this? Should we tell about the time? Should we tell about the time that mother was careening down the mountain road when the brakes went out? Oh, and screaming at my father. The brakes went out. And my father's screaming, put it in second. 
put it in second. She said, I have put it in second. Well, get your foot off the clutch. The what? The what? Get your foot off the clutch. <laughs> Luckily for all of us, she finally lifted her left foot. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know about clutches, somebody will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and I did learn how to down clutch from that memory of when I was six in the back. Um, or should I tell the story about uh, when Linda and I were driving with Mom on the interstate near O'Hare Field, and Mother got lost. O'Hare Airport, sorry, O'Hare Airport, and Mother got lost. <laughs> and would she listen to either of us? Let's see, was it Joe who said, um, is there anybody in our family that's not stubborn? <laughs> would she listen to either of us who could have told us what to do? <laughs> she kept taking right turns. I guess she just kept thinking if she could just keep turning right. She's the only person I've ever heard of who ended up on the runway at O'Hare Airport. On the runway, the planes were landing around us. The guard that she got past feared for his job. He came running out in front of the... Why did he let me get by the gate? I... <laughs> or should I tell about the time that uh, uh, a little eight-year-old girl saw an ad in, the, uh, in a magazine, uh, and m her mother bought 22 jars of deodorant so she could get the tint if she sold 30. <laughs> and then mom stood on the front porch laughing while my dad snuck out to scare us to death. Linda and I, Linda would have been five, because we were going to sleep all night. We were really brave in the front yard. And we were in the tent. Yeah, the tent was for me. And we were in the tent, and Dad said not to worry about snakes if we put the rope around the tent. Well, don't believe it. Anyway, she's watching on the front porch as he sneaks out to scare us. But what he didn't know was that the dog was following him. And just as he got to the tent to make the big noise, the dog brushed against him and scared all of us to death. Mom, life with you was exciting. <laughs> well, does anybody else want to come up and share a story? No, you can't top that one. There are more, but we'll let it go. The rest are for her hundred. <laughs> Okay, well, I don't know if you know who I am. My name's Linda.